This is the Ulan LT005 60W Bicolor COB light. At under 100 bucks, I think it's a wonderful piece of gear and one of the best budget light options out there, but it isn't quite perfect. Let's start off with what you get in the box when you buy it. You obviously get the light itself, then you also get a reflector, a silicon dome diffuser, a protective cover for the light, a bounce mount adapter, and the power adapter with a long cable. I'm going to go over the specs or the features of this light pretty quickly because I want to focus on the real world use of this light, but basically it's a 60 watt COB light. It's bicolor and it goes from 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin, it has a CRI of 95 plus and there's 12 lighting effects to choose from. It gets its power either from a DC port which you get the cable for in the box or a USB-C port but you need a separate adapter and cable for that. I love that the light has two different powering options available but it doesn't have a built-in battery at all which would be a nice thing to have, however you can use the USB-C port to use a power bank to power the light with if the power bank is powerful enough. The light has a mini bowens mount for modifiers but as I said earlier you get the regular size bowens mount adapter in the box with the light so you can use any type of bowens accessories with the light. Do note that the adapter is plastic and I wouldn't use the heaviest soft boxes with this thing. The first thing you notice with this light when you take it out of the box is that it actually looks pretty cool at least in my opinion and it's very small and I can easily fit it in my camera bag. It also has a nice little carrying strap but I don't really know when or where I would use it as it doesn't have a built-in battery. On the back of the light you have a display and four buttons to use the light with as well as the power switch. There is really nothing too crazy when it comes to using the light. There is a button for switching the mode, one for switching the tab within the mode and a plus and minus button for tweaking the settings. It's very easy to use and all the menus are very simple but then again there's nothing too crazy that you could do with the light anyways. What I would like to have is wheels for the color temperature and the brightness adjustments instead of the buttons but then again you can't expect to have it all in a light this cheap. On the bottom of the light you have a regular quarter inch thread for a light stand. Overall the build of the light feels pretty solid which you could expect from Ulanzi products in general but there are some issues. First of all the protective cover is very flimsy and it's quite hard to put on or take off. Somehow it just doesn't seem to perfectly fit the mount but in the end it works so it doesn't really matter too much. The DC input of the light has a locking mechanism which is always a good thing to have to secure your cable to the light but the way the input is built kind of into a hole in the light makes it fairly hard to actually twist the lock. Especially if you manage to tighten the lock well enough it's very hard to get it unscrewed again so for that reason I just never use the locking mechanism at all. One other thing that would be nice to have in the light is some kind of a remote control so you don't have any type of app or a remote controller to control the light from a distance but then again this is a feature that I rarely use on other lights either. All in all the build and the design are just fine but there is room for improvement as well but I don't think the issues are anything too major. Now the most important thing about a light is the light itself obviously so next I'll talk about the color temperature and the brightness of this light. First off I want to talk about color temperature because it actually affects how bright the light gets. The light goes from 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin which I think is a pretty decent range. In all of these test shots I have my camera set to 4700 Kelvin and I'm changing the light in 1000 Kelvin increments with the included dome attached. The light gets a little bit brighter when the temperature gets colder so if we look at the luminance waveform with the different light temperatures you can see that there's a slight difference in brightness when we move from 2700 Kelvin up to 6500 Kelvin. It's not a major difference in the end but it's something that you should know when you're using the light. Also note that the dome makes the light a little bit warmer so if you're using the light at 4700 Kelvin for example with the dome it's actually a little bit warmer than that so if you try to match it with other lights take that into account as well. So what about brightness? How bright is a 60 watt light and especially this Ulanzi light and is a 60 watt light enough for you? For all of the upcoming tests I have the light set to 4700 Kelvin which is nicely about halfway through the range and I have my camera at ISO 800 f 2.8 1 50th of a second shutter speed and the light is about 1 meter or 3 feet away from me. There is also a mirror behind me so that's reflecting a bit of light back into my backside but it shouldn't be able to bounce back into my face in these tests. You can tweak the brightness of the light in 1% increments on a range of 1 to 100%. So first off here's the light without any modifiers at 1%. 25%, 50% and 100% brightness. As it is a 60 watt light you can't expect it to be the brightest thing ever made but it can still do pretty much especially considering the low light capabilities of modern cameras. Now let's pop on the included reflector and do the same 1%, 25%, 50% and 100% brightnesses. The reflector adds a lot of punch to the light but it also makes the light a lot harsher and the angle of light a lot narrower so there's less spill inside the room. At 100% it's actually already uncomfortably bright at this distance pointing straight at me. Now next up let's pop on the included dome to get a bit of a softer light. Here is the output at 100% brightness. 
You can see that the dome takes away some of the brightness and it also warms up the light a bit, but it also makes the light a lot softer, so it's definitely a nice accessory to have in the box. And lastly, I want to try the light with a shoot through umbrella without reflector because I think that is the best key light setup for a small budget. And that is also the setup that I use for my YouTube talking head, so you can see the umbrella right there. It's just out of the frame here with the same umbrella that I'm using for these tests. An umbrella will give you a very beautiful soft light, but it's also very cheap and very easy to use. So here's the light at 100% brightness with the umbrella attached. I think a 60 watt light will work perfectly for a setup like this, but you may need something a bit more powerful if you need to use larger softboxes or if you need to have the light further away from your subject. Also, even though a 60 watt light may be enough for your needs, you are usually going to use it at full power in a interview type setup like this one, so you are kind of limited with the brightness even though it is enough. So for example, if you'd have a twice as powerful light, you could use that at 50%, but if you needed more, you could just pump it up to that 100%. So a 60 watt light, it's enough, but it's not going to give you a lot of room for playing around with the brightness of the light. Now, as I said in the beginning, the light also has 12 effects built in, so let's go over those real quick. To find the effects, you can simply go to the effects mode and then scroll through all of the effects. There's effects like TV, paparazzi, fire, fireworks, strobe, and many more. Personally, I think these kind of effects are an excellent thing to have in a light, but there's something I don't really use in any type of projects ever, so it's a nice thing to have, but it's not something I would pay extra for, which you luckily don't have to do with this light. Now, the worst thing about this light is the fan noise. At first, when I first turned it on, I thought it's some kind of a startup noise or something, but no, it's just a very loud fan for a light this small. Let me demonstrate. So right now I'm talking with my regular volume and there's no noise reduction stuff going on with this audio. And when I turn on the light, so you can hear it, this is what the fan noise sounds like with the light. And I'm now at 1%, so if I go to 0%, you can still hear that the fan doesn't go anywhere. So it doesn't matter what brightness you are at, the fan always seems to be at full power. But I'm gonna pop the light back there. The light even looks pretty well ventilated, so I don't think it would need to have a fan this powerful, but then again, it's very easy to remove fan noise like this while editing the video, so it's not that big of an issue, but it still makes using the light a little bit annoying because I can all the time hear the hissing of the fan while I'm recording videos. But then again, we are talking about a light that is under 100 bucks, so you can't expect it to be perfect. Talking about the price, how does the Ulanzi LT005 compare to different brand 60 watt lights? You have for example lights like the Smallrig RC60B, the Zion G60 and X60 and the Aperture Amaran 60X which are all about 200 bucks, so twice the price of the Ulanzi light. And then there's the Nanlite FC60B which is 160 bucks, so even that is 60 bucks more than this light is. So it's safe to say that the Ulanzi light is easily one of the cheapest if not the cheapest 60 watt COB bicolor light out there. And the great thing is, in my opinion at least, it doesn't mean that it's a bad light by any means. All in all, I think the Ulanzi LT005 is one of the best budget key light options for filmmakers out there. It's insanely cheap, pretty well built, has all of the necessary features, and it's as good of a 60 watt light as you would expect. There are some issues for sure, but it will get the job done just nicely, and at less than 100 bucks, I don't think you will be disappointed if you buy this light. If you have any questions, just drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. But that is all for today for this video, so thank you very much for watching and I hope I will see you in the next one.